Good evening and welcome to another fun, exciting edition of Front of House Live here at the North Hollywood Hideout in Los Angeles, California. Tonight, Ali McGurk takes the stage. She'll play a few songs. We'll talk a little bit. You're going to enjoy it. But before we get there, a reading from the Big Book of Rock. <clears throat> Guitarist Lowell George began his career playing for The Factory, which also featured Rick Hayward on drums. The band split, and George sang for Frank Zappa's Mothers of Invention for a while, before meeting keyboards player Bill Payne. Hayward, meantime, had joined the Fraternity of Man and recorded Don't Bogart That Joint for the Easy Rider soundtrack. A reading from the Big Book of Rock. Hail, hail, rock and roll. How you doing? My name is Mike Dawson. Happy you're here. We're going to get to Ali McGurk in a second, but uh, I chose that reading today from the Big Book of Rock because a couple of weeks ago, we lost guitarist and vocalist for the band Little Feet, Paul Barrere. Paul Barrere was a phenomenal guy. I, I got to share quite a bit of time uh, uh, with him and, and a few laughs uh, and a couple of interviews on the radio. Uh, Paul was just a kid when, uh, when Little Feet was, when Lowell George was doing his thing and Lowell always looked kind of down on, on Paul Barrera, like treated him like a, a little F up little brother. Um, uh, but then eventually led him in the band Little Feet. And in a couple of weeks, the reason why I'm telling you this is because in a couple of weeks, uh, we're going to play for you, um, a performance by Paul Barrere and Fred Tackett of Little Feet, recorded at Soho Restaurant and Music Club in Santa Barbara, California, um, back in 2002, I believe it was. Uh, anyway, uh, I had a deal with the club and I recorded pretty much every show that happened there. So I have this one on tape in glorious stereo. And as a tribute to the late, great Paul Barrere, we're gonna play that for you on Front of House, uh, either next week or in the upcoming weeks. Now I'm just kicking back here in my uh, Grover Anderson t-shirt and ready for some Ally McGurk. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Front of House. Please listen on a good pair of speakers. This is Ally McGurk. <laughs> Broadcasting from the North Hollywood Hideout in Los Angeles, California. Welcome to Front of House. Our guest, Allie McGurk. Take it away, Allie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Does she know that when I see you it still feels like you're mine? Cause now I hear that you've been seeing her for quite a long time Ooh, I guess it's cool and I guess she seems nice But does she know that when I see you it still feels like you're mine? It still feels like you're mine Does she like it when you're hungry and you're waiting in line? Do you make each other happy more than half of the time? Is there anything about you she knows better than I? Does she know that when I see you it still feels like you're mine? It feels like you're mine. It still feels like you're mine. Try and see each other any old time And 
if our friends are broken hearted, I just tell them we're fine. Cause I'm glad you got someone keeping you warm at night. But does she know that when I see you, it still feels like you're mine? It feels like you're mine. It feels like you're mine. It still feels like you're mine. Allie McGurk is our guest, front of house. Welcome, and thank you for coming today. Thank you for having me. Um, first off, uh, very cool voice. I like the way you sing. <laughs> Secondly, uh, I, I I write a lot of songs about ex girlfriends. Yeah, and I guess it translates to the to the girl. That's way. not what this song's about. No, no, yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> I'm gullible <laughs> on this show. Do you still see that person? <laughs> no. Well, not any old time. Uh, not really. No. Thank God. So, so you right? came out. You came out from. Uh, uh, you were. You're from Concord, Massachusetts. Yes. Tech, yes, I am. I grew up there. It's my hometown. Uh, at what age did you bail? Seventeen. Nice. Never looked back. No, That's no. I'm I'm with you. <laughs> well, my mom ended up leaving when I when I graduated. She was kind of waiting it out, um, and we both we all bailed the whole family. <laughs> um, and no, but Concord is a beautiful, beautiful, cool place. So. Where Very are you based now? Growing up there, um, Somerville, Massachusetts, like a half hour away from Concord. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, right, right next to Boston. It's the cool, cool city next to Boston. I was in Boston for a good 36 hours uh, just for a quick show and went to one of these bars that's like one of the oldest bars in, in America. In Boston, Boston. Yeah, yeah in like, Boston, in Boston. like Faneuil Hall or what? Uh, it, was, it was like this horseshoe bar. Mm. Oh, No. I don't know. Okay. Well, anyway. there's a place that has a bar that's in Cambridge that looks exactly like a horseshoe brick and mortar. Maybe you remember that. Um, yeah, that that wasn't it. Um, but it they, they said it was the oldest bar in America, and it was really funny because they were lying to. You. No, just kidding. Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, I sat down next to this dude, and he was eating oysters, and I'd never eaten oysters before. Ooh. And I'm like, all right, buddy, you got to tell me what's going on here. I gotta I gotta get in on this oyster game. And we started talking, and I told him I'm from Concord, California. And he's like, no shit. You know Ed? And I'm like, what, Ed Marese? He goes, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I used to work for him. That's but, funny. Really, texted the guy right there. Got a text back from Ed. Yeah, tell Dawson. I said, hi. So I had to go to Boston That's to meet a dude like that. Boston people are a different breed, aren't they? So are LA people. That's true, but most <laughs> L.A. people are not from L.A. That's true. You I know? guess that's true. One, one, yeah. thing, one thing you guys uh, have you know, up there in, in Summersville and Concord is you don't have a bunch of people who weren't born there talking about how fucking great their sports teams are. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's yeah. What, that's what we run into all the time down here. Um. Talk, so wait, a lot of people move to LA and then like love the Lakers, is what you're saying? No. no. Oh, they love the Red Sox. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, I see that. I see Sox, that. Sox, the Pats, Tom Brady. Everyone likes to be a winner. Right. You know, I just played a gig at Fenway Park. By the way, it was really? really, really. By the way, mm, no big deal. It was on like a little rooftop thing before the game and it was a Yankees game and we got to go to the game after the gig obviously and the Yankees were killing us they're, they're very much better than us this year but the stadium Fenway Park was like cheering for the Yankees that is so it strange was, it was like half and half it was really bizarre and I feel like it's because we don't really care about baseball anymore because you, the Red Sox are lame now yeah 
And you got the title one, so that was all you need. Break yeah. the Babe Ruth curse. Exactly. Like yeah. it once there's nothing to be passionate about after that. <laughs> well, the only thing to be passionate about <laughs> in this longing room. Longing for the win. Live music all across the boards. Ali McGurk is our guest. Uh, she's hitting the Hotel Cafe tonight. Uh, and um, by the time this airs, that will be six weeks ago. You missed but, it. Uh, you missed it. It was an <laughs> awesome show. And uh, we're blessed that you just carved out a little bit of time here to join oh us God, in so the bad. North Hollywood hideout. Let's hear another song, my dear. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Why don't we do another um, uh, pessimistic love song? Spending days on every kiss But in my heart I know it's right To sleep in my own bed tonight Never been more bound up than now I want to stay but I don't know how Could live my life just for your embrace what is love but an empty vase? Oh, it would take a miracle. You're not boyfriend material. But the heart's a fickle queen, always terrorizing everything. been more wound up than now want to keep my cool but i don't know how i won't live my life for a man's embrace what is love but an empty vase oh seems like you could want it babe seems like you could flake on it baby is that something you would do? Don't, don't you think it's kind of funny, babe? I would have liked you when I was 20, babe. I would have liked to get caught up in your scene and terrorize everything. should get stuck on you I wonder what you could put me through another tune time won't erase what is love but an empty vase Ally McGurk is front of house is that song called Empty Vase? Yeah, that's Empty Vase and is that on the record, Slow Burn? No, not so far. We're, we're premiering new material for I you guys. I love it. Nice. Are we're working gonna... out new material on you guys, actually. <laughs> I like it. Uh, follow Allie on the Twitter and the Instagram at Allie Sings Songs. That's A-L-I Sings Songs. That's clever. I like that. Oh, thank you. Question about Empty Vase. Did that just come to your mind, or when you wrote that song, was there an Empty Vase in the room? <laughs> It's a good question. I think there was a vase in the room, like a dining okay. room, but it was probably, I don't know. Ah, I don't know. Now I'm like creating a story where there was an empty That's vase. fine. I'm like That's visualizing. Fine. I'm like, yeah. no, yeah, you're right. There was. I don't know. I find with a lot of songwriters and myself especially, um, a lot of times we feel forced to write. Like, fuck, I got to write something. What mm -hmm. is there? Honestly, oh, that I think that is it. That's yeah. what happened. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, 
I was cleaning out the vase, the dead flower of the dead flowers. <laughs> and I was like, yep. Yeah, I you know what a, this is. <laughs> you have a line in that song uh, about uh, you'll terrorize everything. Um, and yet he's not boyfriend material. There's so many deeper levels to oh. this. <laughs> You're painting a picture. Okay. Yes. You want to talk about Tell it? Tell me about it. <laughs> Tell me about it. You know, no, the heart's a fickle queen. Okay. And the heart is, you know, making the choice. I'm not making the choice. I guess the heart would terrorize everything. The, heart's that, the, okay. the heart is the queen, and that's what queens do because, you know, ultimate power corrupts ultimately. You know, <laughs> queens. Very nice. Did you go to and college? Kings. Oh yeah, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I went to college. Where'd you go to school? I went to UMass Amherst. And uh, what'd you study there? Um, social thought and political economy. <laughs> I like it. Both, both. That's where I got that quote from, basically. Yeah. yeah. Both songwriting leading leaning uh, uh, majors. Yes, definitely. No, it's one. It was this one program at UMass Amherst. If any of you listeners love UMass, it's a very small program. Basically, it was like anti-capitalism, like race, class, and gender, like extremists, and we took a lot. It was very, it was cool, but it was. Um, it was very like specific little crew of people, I guess. When did you uh, first turn to playing live and picking up a guitar? Around that time, actually, in college. I had um, a guitar when I was in high school, an acoustic guitar. Actually, I always had an acoustic guitar until a couple of years ago. Um, but I didn't... Sort of just like I was always doing something, but didn't play out until college. And I started doing that. I did a, added a minor in music when I was at UMass, too. So then I got into like being in, around all these cool musicians and I kind of got a cool gig. And then that was the start of it. I just been slowly gigging ever since trying to pick up speed. Very cool. Uh, Ali's website is AliMcGurk.com. You can also stream the, stream the album on Spotify. It's called Slow Burn, but as I tell everybody, fuck streaming it. Um, go to the website, buy the record from the artist. That's the way artists make money, and we keep having awesome songwriters coming here on front of house. Let's hear another song, Ali. I'm digging this. Sure. Why don't we do one from Slow Burn, right? Cool. We'll do, we'll do the, the social rah-rah song. Have we spoiled all the earth? And when you think about me, does it hurt? I think and worry every day in the north. What have we done? Have I stolen all my songs? And am I singing them all wrong? I think and worry every day ordinary way what have we done there's so many lies we've got to work through So much sacrifice, but you don't want to. Cause each man has 
got his price It's not a virtue And you don't seem to mind Oh, it's not about you That is a cool song. You've got some serious vocal range. Thanks. It's reminding me a lot of Susan Tedeschi right now. Mm. You know who she is? I'm blushing. Yeah. I mean, you've, you've got, you're really in that vocal Susan pocket. She, yeah, she knows how to riff, riff up the blues. Yeah. That's for sure. Man, that's a good song. You know, uh, Sal Leonardo, brother Sal, when he was here, he reminded us that um, the good ones borrow. The great ones steal. So don't worry about stealing your songs. Ali McGurk is our guest. Um, obviously, that song's not stolen. but if It's there two is, chords, so it kind of is. Yeah. There's a... Uh, well, look, again, and I'll say it eight million fucking times. There are only so many chords and only so many beat, beats per minute. I know. And the English language is not ever expanding that you can't use the same goddamn words. So stop suing everybody. Yeah, it's not fair to be a songwriter of the future. <laughs> but there is like they had yeah. it. No, just kidding. There is a level of uh, of self doubt that goes with songwriting. I'm not sure that I, I think there was a, just a, a touch of that in there. I don't think that's what the song is about. But do you feel that sometimes when you write mm -hmm. songs, like what the, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah, I mean, sometimes I describe that as like the demon on the shoulder, mm -hmm. like when I'm. Because everybody has that, um, I th think. And then it's like you have to like learn how to tame it and discern it, I guess. But, yeah, no, I hate myself, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> it's not what I'm asking, but, I mean, what I am saying is there's, there's, there's a, a, a certain level of self-deprecation that is... Uh, common and almost requisite to be an artist on stage yeah you got to be humble or else i i mean i think it's better to be humble mm -hmm. um otherwise you're not gonna get better or you're not gonna like you know people can smell it yeah yeah, you're, yeah. You're, especially out yes. here yeah yeah <laughs> Well, 
We'll be back with more with Ali McGurk in just a few minutes. I do want to let you know that when we recorded this, Ali has a show at Hotel Cafe later that night. So you may see uh, a look of panic when she finds out what time it is. We'll see later on in the show when we get back to Ali McGurk. If you enjoy the show, I invite you to share it with a friend, please. This is the only way we get exposure. Hit the like button, share the link, send it to all of your friends, send it to all of your enemies. We're here at Front of House for everybody. And uh, very happy that you've come along on this journey with us. If you really like the show, consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash front of house. I'm gonna say it again while you pull out your credit card. Patreon.com slash front of house. Let's get back to it. Ali McGurk is our guest. Tell me about the first gig you ever played. Oh my gosh. Actually, it was really, um, I was lucky because I had an uncle and um, who was really cool rocker when I was young. And he had this like noise rock band. Oh, sorry. That was kind of like, they had a thousand projects and they were like a bunch of like cool, just like grunge nineties people. And he started a side project of that band with me. And, ooh, I broke your stool. No, you didn't. <laughs> no, I don't need it. I don't even, oh, okay, well, sure. This is the uh, trick stool. That I That's the get. trick stool. Yeah. That's good. All right. So the band was called Pudding Maker, his ba his band, but he had a, started an offshoot with my brother and I when we were like really little. I think we were both in elementary school. My brother might have been in middle school, um, called The Youngins. And we had our first gig, my first gig ever at um, the Kirkland Cafe, which doesn't exist anymore. But it was really cool. My like after school teachers came <laughs> and we had two gigs as that band and that was my first gig. How old are you? I think I was like seven or eight or something. Did you play guitar? I played no, I played drums on the song Wild Thing and then I sang the rest of the gig, I guess. <laughs> I wish I you know, I'm I'm grateful I didn't have like my whole childhood recorded on an iPhone, but I do think that gig, that would have been a funny thing to, there's one picture and I do remember, I'm wearing a baseball hat and I'm in a t-shirt and jeans and I'm, my arms are crossed and I'm singing into the microphone like this. And it's, I remember being like, I'll sing for you, but like, yeah. <laughs> just having. Don't expect me to. Don't expect I'm me to give you it. anything. Yeah. Like body, yeah, no, I'm not performing here. <laughs> I don't know what it was. My, st I, you know, I, I actually now work with students about the same, like, 10 and 8 to 14-year-olds, and they do. They cross, You cross their cross their arms. Like, <laughs> it's very scary to sing, I think, when you're, when you're not used to it. Are you a what, – what, uh, what do you do besides music? Do you – I mean, how do you work with kids? I teach – I'm voice lessons. Nice. I do voice lessons. So that's nice. why I know. <laughs> I'm like – I'm always, like, swatting at their arms. <laughs> And that's a, uh, like what, for people who don't really know what voice lessons entail, like, uh, for instance, me, maybe we're yeah. thinking of, you know, we see some music documentary and there's a singer backstage going, la, 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 la. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some of that. What, what are the tips? What's, I don't know. What's I think my on? voice lessons are a little bit unique or whatever. Not there's some things that are universal. You warm ups, mm -hmm. kind of like vocal health. That's that you warm up to kind of practice good vocal health and keep your like physical instrument on its A game. But the I think that the majority of the lessons I spend are like kind of just I feel like a lot of people feel like they don't, like music is this like secret universe that's like so overwhelming, that's like mm -hmm. these keys to unlock. And it's like right. kids especially, they don't know, like they think it's a secret or something. So we just kind of like get into just playing and having fun with it. And then, so that's a long way to say I'm like a hippie. No, just kidding. <laughs> what, uh, what, do you, what do you do? I'm sure that you run into... Um, kids all the time who are just scared to death 
to actually sing in front of people and get on oh, the yeah. stage and they cross their arms. Or even what just, do you do to, to make them relax and say, look, it, it, it's cool. You got to yeah. leave it all on the stage, kid. Well, it's like, that's the funny thing is every kid like is kind of different with what their hang up about it is. You know what I mean? Because there's like certain people who are going to be like perfectionist. So they only want to do something like if they know exactly what's going to be happening, like totally in control. And they're like some of the, like really talented kids where you're like very impressed, but you're like, all right, chill out. Like let's, that's the, that's the thing we need to like loosen up in there. But I mean, I had one student and um, she wouldn't, we had our first lesson ever and she was 10 and she wouldn't like do anything I was asking her to do. Cause she was just like, mm-mm. You know what I mean? Like, so it's kind of like a social, like, thing where you're just kind of encouraging somebody because you know they want to be doing it, but um, you just have to keep, like, giving them permission and telling yeah. them to give themselves permission and saying everybody feels this way. It's, just, like, true. Like, like, is it, like, everyone isn't, you know, you just have to remind people of that. And... I, and I'm pretty vulnerable, like, I'm pretty real with them, and I'm, like, not a perfectionist at all, and try to just, I don't know. Do you ever... Give them information. I'm sounding like I don't teach... I give them real information, too, people. <laughs> Do you ever like, remind them that, uh, you know, everybody gets nervous, and that's part of the game, and it'll totally. never go away? And all it will never... But also, like, it's kind of what's the juice. It's the juice. Like, it's... um, it, You talk about harnessing the the adrenaline that it, that you get from that anxiety. But I don't want it to, I don't think, I mean, I don't think you want it to be anxiety as much. You want to change, like, do some mental gymnastics to, like, get it. I don't know. I don't know what I'm... No, I, I like you know it. No, I, mean? I, I like, feel you. Call it excitement. Yeah. <laughs> Breathe into those butterflies, kids. Breathe into it, exactly. All right, Ali McGurk in the studio. Uh, this is front of house. If you are listening on one speaker, you are doing it wrong. We are in stereo. It's music. We have two ears. So you should listen twice as much as you talk. Let's hear another song. Okay. Um, let's do, I mean, should we do one cover? I could do Up all you. originals, but I do like singing covers. I love covers. Okay. A you well, know. a well chosen want... cover is, uh, one of the greatest gifts a performer can give. And I think that it's very fun to sing covers, so. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Before I put on my makeup, I say a little prayer for you. Wondering what dress to wear now I say a little prayer for you Forever and ever You stay in my heart And I love you forever and ever We never will part And I will love you forever and ever that's how it must be To live without you Would only be heartbreak for me I run for the bus, dear And while riding I think of us, dear and say a little prayer for you And at work I just take time And all through my coffee break time I say a little prayer for you Oh. 
apart Cause I'm gonna love you forever and ever That's how it must be To live without you would only be heartbreak For me, baby It's only heartbreak For me It's only heartbreak for me And darling, believe me For me, there is no one Oh, no one Oh, oh there's no one There's no one Oh there's no one but you Would you please love me too? I got to change the key somehow Oh Say you love me too, baby That's never happened Say you love me Say you love me right now, baby Forever and ever you Stay in my heart And I will love you forever and ever We're never gonna part Cause I will love you forever and ever That's how it must be to live without you would only be heartbreak for me. Mm -hmm. That happened. I don't know. <laughs> that was good. Is that a Dion Warwick song? It's huh? Burt Bacharach. Dion okay. saying it. Yeah. Okay. I have. It's an interesting cover. It's it's good. It's great. Um, you must have had some. Like, why that song? I don't know. You know what? I always loved it. At first, I when I first learned it, I was like in love and singing it in like a happy way. Okay. And then I was not anymore. Um. And the song kind of just like was still really meaningful, but like it changed meaning. And it's just like a beautiful song. And for, and actually, like, you know, I'm obsessed with Aretha Franklin. And I think that I started like playing it out around her death. Um, and it just like, I mean, it just stayed in my repertoire because I love, I love singing it. What was the first record? Or album, cassette tape, CD, whatever that you ever bought with your own money. <laughs> honest, the honest answer. You want the honest answer? Yeah. I think it would have been like. You can lie to me later. Spice by Spice Girls. <laughs> <laughs> you should have lied to me now. I mean, no, that's, that, that was makes I sense. was a child. <laughs> makes sense. Um, I. Th think that's like the first like i yeah i remember like driving home after buying that like unwrapping it like looking through the uh the jacket the, the pig the jacket yeah and like just they were like i had never seen anything cool like until that moment sure. like they'd started defining it for me my uh, nine-year-old brain whatever it was <laughs> and you were like i'm gonna do that Ten. yeah well yeah, I don't know. I was think I was just like we didn't have Instagram at the time, so I just like remember looking at those photos for a while. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> it's weird today. I always forget. It's weird today for people growing up. So I was an '80s kid, mm -hmm. and we we you know you didn't have to tell us, yell at us to go play outside. We were outside all the damn time. But when we got when we got new music, the great thing about getting a new record or a new tape or whatever 
was looking at that and reading yeah. the album notes. Yeah, and totally. And seeing the pictures of the band. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, right. when you buy things digitally, I know. You know you I don't even have out. an album. I have a CD, but I don't have a little booklet. And I'm like, maybe for the next album, I'll just like do it, it that does. for some reason. I just like kill more trees. For you my know own this. Ego. It does like triple the price of printing CDs. Right. You get down yeah. to it, you're like, wait a minute, I can print these I'm for a dollar a piece if I nice just thought. do a jacket sleeve. Yeah, I know. Just just give me the fucking sleeve and let me get yeah. the fuck out just of here. Just follow my Instagram record. if you want any more about it. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. The Instagram is Ali Sings Songs, which uh, I'm a fan of. I think that's very clever. Oh, that's, that's nice. Well, I mean, it was clever when everyone else did it too, but it's <laughs> equally clever when you do. Thanks. Yeah, I got that early. I was the first. I was like... I'm the first Alley singer on this website <laughs> application. Nice. <laughs> Same thing on the Twitter, too. Ally McGurk is our guest. Um, I know that we got to get you on the road sometime soon, so yeah. I don't want to deprive the folks of more songs. If you don't mind, let's hear another one. Uh, you can visit Allie's website at AllieMcGurk.com. That's A-L-I-M-C-G-U-I-R-K. Dot com and pick up the record there. It's called Slow Burn, and we are blessed with Ally McGurk in the studio. Front of house. I'm going to do, I'm going to keep doing some of this um, new material, test on you guys, so um, let me know if we should keep it. Just kidding, this one, if you don't think I should keep it, don't let me know. <laughs> Make all my worries his Not getting out alive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I tell you this It will put up a fence Make an electric fence You won't get away with it Won't get away with it Cause I need an exorcist the oracle she said your mouth is full she said your time has come she said you better run you won't get away with it oh you won't get away with it that 
child all on her own. Oh, oh, oh. She made that. That's fucking great. Um, channeling some Mississippi River Delta blues. Thanks. Yeah. Not oh. to be confused with the Jackson County Mexican methamphetamine blues. They're two different things. <laughs> um, I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah, no, you don't want to get into that. <sighs> they sound the same, though. Um, have you been into the blues a lot in your life? Like music yeah, wise? Yeah, I think. I think the blues is like pretty foundational for probably, in my opinion, probably any artist growing up in the U.S. Because mm -hmm. um, it's like such a part of a lot of the music we listen to. But yeah, I love the blues. I I've been actually the concept. A lot of the concept around the next album is like because I got a blues award last year in Boston. No um, shit. Yeah, and I never even thought of myself like. I might have said blues as like the fourth genre if mm -hmm. you were asking me like what what's what's your what's your stuff like I would never have said blues, but I obviously like am. <laughs> um, but I think that the concept of like the torch songs that's like a big and the, these like songs about just like that are like soulful and like painful and like deep that I've always been attracted to that kind of like like I was like there's no award for like the forlorn artist of the year right. <laughs> but yeah I think that I've always been attracted to like not all I wouldn't I'm like nervous to say like yeah I love the blues because to somebody who really knows the blues I'm like pretty like understood novice I don't but I know like who Robert Johnson is mm -hmm. <laughs> I know his whole story all of his stuff. He's got a, a just a fascinating tale with Robert Johnson. And it, um, if you look at the time he lived in, um, it makes perfect sense that he dies in agony, foaming at the mouth. He's got a cataract I in didn't one even eye. Know There's that. the evil eye. Um, obviously, he made a deal with the devil. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But everything is explainable by science as you go through it. But his story is just fucking fantastic. Yeah, you know what? I don't even, like, you know, that's what I'm saying. I need to read the story. I didn't know he died like that. Uh, yeah, he, uh, he was banging some bartenders or bar owner's wife. Okay. And that bar owner handed him a bottle of whiskey with the seal broken. He had laced it with strychnine. One of Robert Johnson's buddies sees him about to take a drink from it, knocks it out of his hand, glass shatters. Okay. Don't you know better than to drink something somebody gave you, the seal's broken? Robert Johnson looks at his buddy and says, don't you know better than to knock a bottle of whiskey out of my hand? He gets another one from the bartender, seal broken on that one too. Uh, they think it was strychnine. But, wow. uh, you know, within like four or five hours... He died for the next 11 hours or three days. It was an agonizing, torturous death for the poor man. Jesus. Then again, don't, don't go messing around with other people's wives, I guess. I guess not. Guess not. That's the blues, my That's friends. That's the blues, though. How do you know? That's right. It's got to find his inspiration somewhere. Ally McGurk is here, and we are happy about it. This is Front of House. It's in stereo. 
And let's hear another song, please. What do you want to play for us? Okay. Oops. Um, we'll do... How many more songs are we going to do? Let's strategize this. <laughs> Why don't we do this? Why don't we do one more song? Okay. And then we're at six. What time is it? Uh, it's, it's a quarter to six. Oh, I got to go. All right. So Allie had to jam. We kept her a little longer than intended, but uh, a great performance. And... Um, uh, super cool, super cool down to earth chick. I think, uh, I think, I think she was thrown off a little bit right at the beginning when I was like, all right, Allie, take it away. She's like, is this where we are? So, uh, good job. Open door. Allie, you want to come back and do the show? We'd love to have you, uh, anytime you're out here in Los Angeles and congratulations, Allie, on your nomination as blues singer of the year at the Boston Music Awards. Uh, we'll find out if you won in December, but we already know you're a winner, so it's all good. That's just hardware. It's just hardware. It's more than that. It's the strife and the struggle and the rock and effing roll, and it's front of house. Again, visit us uh, at patreon.com slash front of house. Please support the show and share it, share it, share it on Twitter. We're at FOHpod. Um, find our logo, find us, subscribe, tell all of your friends, and thank you. Uh, a special show with Paul Barrere and Fred Tackett coming at you next week, front of house. <laughs>